In this video, I want to show you a trig book that I have. And this book is really different from other books on trigonometry because it's a trig workbook. So you can actually sit down with this book and a pencil and you can just work on trig and it has everything you need. It has explanations, it has examples, and it has answers to every single problem in the book. The book is called Trigonometry, Essentials Practice Workbook with Answers, and it's written by Chris McMullen. So first let me say that Chris has written other books on math and on physics. Uh, I have his book on basic algebra, which has like just some specific topics in basic algebra. I also have his book on single variable calculus, and he has a book on multivariable calculus. I will leave links in the description to all of his books uh, that I own, and I think those are all excellent choices. But this one is really cool because it has specific trig topics for which people are known to struggle with, and Chris emphasizes those topics in this book. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the book and look at the contents and the layout of this book because I think you're gonna be really, really impressed. So he talks about how to use the book here on page four. And then chapter one is really easy. It's just converting degrees to radians. Chapter two is going backwards, converting radians to degrees. Three is on identifying trig functions in right triangles. Four is on special right triangles. And then here's where it gets really, really good in my opinion. Five is on how to memorize basic trig functions in quadrant one. Now this is something that I think is really dependent on the individual. He gives you a way to do it, which is great, but you should use whatever works, but you should definitely memorize them. Six is on finding reference angles, and then seven is on determining basic trig functions in quadrants two through four. And so basically you use the reference angles and your knowledge of the trig function values in quadrant one in order to come up with trig function values in other quadrants. For example, what is the sign of you know, 270 degrees, well that one's pretty easy, or what is the sign of 300 degrees, etc. Chapter eight is on inverse trig functions, which again, is another problem area I think for most people. Not only is on the law of sines and law of cosines. 10 is on trig identities, and 11 is algebraic equations that involve trig functions. And then of course you have an answer key that has answers to every single problem in the book. While it doesn't have everything, but it has the important stuff. Let's look at the layout of this book. Perhaps one of the most important chapters in this book is chapter seven, determine basic trig functions in quadrants two through four. And this is really what makes trig hard for a lot of people because if you don't know how to do this, that means a couple things. That means you don't know how to do this. It also means you don't know how to solve trigonometric equations, which are a big part of trig. So it really, really hinders your ability to do well in a class like trig. And this is covered early in a trig course and everything or a lot of things at least build on this. And that's what makes trig hard for a lot of people. Here he talks about a nice way to memorize the signs. And there's different ways to think about this. I always think about the unit circle. And then here he gives you some examples and he does a pretty good job explaining everything. Pictures are really important in my opinion when finding reference angles. I always draw a little picture and that's something you don't see here, but he still does explain really, really well. And then here you have tons of exercises. Tons, right? So many problems. 24 here. Let's turn the page, see what we have here. 24 more, right? 24 more. This is perfect. Even just for the fact that it has so many problems and so many answers means that you can sit down and practice and you can check your work. Whereas if you had a regular textbook, you might only have maybe 20 problems, maybe, that are like this or less, that actually have solutions that you can check in the back of the book. So it really kind of hinders your ability to practice. So that's what this is, right? This is a workbook. It's meant for practice. Oh, look at this. This is the section on inverse trig functions. And look at all of these practice problems. This is awesome. Just tons of problems. And again, you have all of the solutions in this awesome book. Another thing I really like about this book, and this is a little bit off topic from what we're looking at, but is the price, right? This book is not expensive. It's super affordable. It's a well-made paperback. I just gotta give it a whiff. Just gonna give it a whiff here. Mmm. Yeah, just a really well-made book, well-made paperback, very, very affordable. So it's not gonna like, you know, be a really big burden for students. Just a nice affordable book 
that will drastically improve your trig skills. This is perhaps one of the heaviest sections in this book. It's chapter 10, learn and apply trig identities. Look at all of this math. So he goes through and just shows you a lot of trig identities and how to come up with them. I mean, several pages here. Usually in most chapters, it's just one or two pages. These are really important identities. This is really, really useful. And it gets even better. I mean, look at all of these examples. And then you have problems. For example, use an angle sum identity to calculate the sine of 105. And then he's got a couple here with angle sum identities. Let's look on the next page. More angle sum identities. So tons of practice, right? Way more than you'll get in a regular book, even more. Now you have angle difference identities. So it's all organized, more angle difference identities double angle identities, right, really nice. Double angle identities, and it's nice he tells you which one to use. I think that's useful, so you actually practice using that identity. Then you have half angle identities. So you have an example with cosine, sine, tangent, cotangent, secant. And he does it again here, right? Sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, cotangent. Very nice. Then Pythagorean identities. So just tons of practice with identities. And then here you have some actual identities that you actually have to verify. And so that's really, really useful. You know, one thing I'm wondering is, does Chris have solutions to these verification problems? I, that's, that's something I actually haven't checked. Let's go ahead and see if we can find that because that's something that most textbooks don't have. In fact, every single trig book I have, and I have several, none of them have the verifications for the identities. So let's go ahead and look in the back and see if Chris actually includes that. And as expected, Chris does not include the verification of the identities, which, which makes sense, right? Writing all that out, it is a lot to write, uh, and it's just a lot of math to print. And so most books, they don't include those verifications, and this one is no exception. But it does have way more exercises than a regular trig book. You're gonna get way more practice with identities, with finding trig function values, with solving triangles, the law of sines, the law of cosines. I mean, pretty much every topic that's in this book, he basically completely overdoes it. And that's what's needed, I think, to get better at trigonometry. Overall, I think this is an amazing book on trigonometry. I really wish that when I was in trig, I had a book like this. And I really wish I knew about this book before because I think it's so helpful to people who are taking trigonometry mainly because it just has answers and problems to so many of the exercises. Of course, it also has explanations, but it's really the exercises that you get in this book and the organization that really make it uh, a worthwhile purchase, in my opinion. So if you're taking trig and you're looking for a supplement, I think this is a great choice. If you're trying to learn trig on your own, I would definitely recommend this book, but I would also recommend another book on trigonometry. Maybe just get like one of those big like algebra and trig books, like the one uh, pre-calculus by Stewart is a good one, or um, the one by uh, algebra and trig by Hornsby, Lyle and Roxwold is also really good. So all of those big thick books on algebra and trig, any of those should suffice. And then you can use this as a supplement to learn trig. If you're in calculus and you're having a hard time with like trig functions and how to evaluate trig functions, I think it's worth trying this book. It's really not like a huge you know, financial commitment because of the price, it's so affordable. So yeah, I like this book. I think it's awesome for what you get and it's well worth it for anyone who's having any type of trouble with trig or anyone who wants to self-study trig or anyone taking trig. Again, it's the one by Chris McMullen and he's got other books and I'll also leave information to those in the description of this video. Until next time, I just wanted to show you an awesome book. Good luck and take care.